guys, Amanda here. I have had a really hard day. My son had a doctor's appointment after school and he, when we got there, he started acting up and he had one of his um, behavioral episodes and it was violent. He was hitting me, he punched me, he tried to cover my nose and my face, uh, my nose and my mouth so I couldn't breathe. Um, he pushed me two times and gave me that bruise right there on my arm. He picked up a rock and threw it at um, the glass on the door, the, gla uh, the glass door, and chipped it, and he knocked, tried to knock over the metal coat rack, um, coat hanger. He tried to push it onto the doctor, so, um, he can't go back there anymore because of that. Um, and that, that, that really kind of hurts because uh, I had talked to him about the treatment and the behavior and I said, you know, well, what will happen with him with other psychiatrists when he gets older and stuff and he said I would never have to worry, he was never going to not work with him no matter how bad it got. and. I guess he had a limit, so, I mean, I, un I understand, but at the same time, he said he would never do this, so, you know, that, that makes me sad. And the police were called, and there was a woman and a man, and I talked to the woman and I said, you know, he responds better to women because, you know, women are just more naturally, you know, softer and, you know, kind of like maternal, you know what I mean? Like we just, a lot of us have that quality and um, it's easier for him to calm down with that kind of tone of voice, you know, it's a softer voice, whatnot. So he did de-escalate and he started reading a book, a book of all things he hates to read, but he knows he has to read for 30 minutes a night now because he's in fourth grade and that's what his teacher requires, so as long as he reads something, I'm happy, Just he's just got to, you know, do a little more, but anyway, um, it was just very traumatic and when when the cops had got there and they were talking to me and the doctor um, and he asked because that uh, his doctor had said you know he is um, a special needs child and 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 he had asked okay what do you, what are his symptoms and I'm sorry what are, what are his diagnoses and I said he's on the spectrum and then he said very sternly and seriously um, oppositional defiant disorder which is news to me he never said anything like that to me that being like an official diagnosis I know we, we had talked about other possible diagnoses but he, I didn't know that he had made a decision so um, that's new to me and ADHD and then I said he has Asperger's and then the doctor said now that he has autism, a high functioning autism but it's 
it's it's not as high as Asperger's, but it's not as low as you know somebody who has a, a limited speech or you know has, has more symptoms, more severe symptoms. So, you know, right now I I, <laughs> I don't know what to think. You know, I looked it up and you know, reading it, I was like, oh my god, this sounds like him. So, now I have to find a new doctor. There's already one that we had talked about, um, so we're going to try that. Now, he's not going to officially drop him entirely. He's still his, his psychiatrist. He's still going to do the med piece, but not not the, um, the piece where Casey comes in for an um, appointment. I cried, like, all through that whole thing, because it was very traumatic. I mean, it, it was, it was just very scary and traumatic and sad, and, um, I cried. I cried all the way home. I couldn't drive. My mother drove. I was not able to drive, and then when we got home, well, back to my mother's house, I realized that it was... <laughs> 5.56 and I'm like, oh, uh oh, I gotta go to my meeting because it starts at 6.30, um, so I went down there and I was able to talk more freely about what was going on, um, because it was just me and another person, so we both had things we had to talk about and she listened and I listened and it, I think it was a good, um, a good session. And, uh, on top of this, I'm, I'm going through my own stuff, too, you know. It's really hard to deal with everything, and I, I feel very overwhelmed, and just, I, I, I don't know what else to do. I mean, there are other options. I mean, he still wants him to do the day program there, because they have the... Uh, they have trained people for behaviors just like Casey, and the problem is that the school has to agree, the current school he's at, because they pay the tuition. So, and he's still having problems with that child at school. I mean, he finally just told me what was going on and how he was feeling and he is so upset about having to deal with AJ they they put him right behind him Casey sits behind this kid and you know this has been going on since second grade and I can't I can't do this anymore I'm gonna tell them look I can't have Casey in the same room as this child. I don't care if Casey has to go into a separate room or whatever, but I, he's, this is not being dealt with. You know, it's not getting better the way that the schools have been, I mean, he's only been there, this is his first week, so, you know, I'm not talking about the current school, but the other school, I mean, wasn't wasn't much help. I mean, they just basically were like, well, he's got to learn to get along with people who are annoying and get in your face. And it's like, seriously, you, you wouldn't put up with that, so why does he have to put up with it? You know, so, um, I think I'm, I need, I'm, I'm not budging. I do not want my son in the same room as that kid at all, period. I mean, I get, like, if they go to lunch or whatever, but I'm serious. I don't want them together. <sighs> but, I mean, that doesn't excuse Casey's behavior. I mean, that's what has been bothering him, but it doesn't excuse his behavior. And I did talk to him about that. It's not okay. You know, it's serious. And I told him that, you know, if you keep going at this rate... You know, there is an option called residential where you live 
at a facility and they help you with your problems. I said, but you would live there and it would be a long time. You know, I said, You're, we're running out of options to help you. I said, you have to understand how serious this is. You know, what if somebody got seriously hurt and they went to the hospital? I said, this this can't happen. You, you have to learn how to control your anger. You know, it's okay to be angry, but hurting people is not okay. And I'm trying so hard to get him to understand this, and it's like... It's like he doesn't care, or unable to process the information, I don't know. Maybe it's something different, but it's just, it's just very, um, overwhelming. This, this whole, everything is just overwhelming. I'm very sad. Um, I feel like I, I can't help him, um, that I, you know, right now, he's the only one who can, who can help himself. I can't force him to make the right choices. He has to choose that for himself. But he's not choosing those right choices. But he is happy he's not going there because he doesn't like going there, so... You know, I guess that's the silver lining. It worked out for the best, I suppose. But, um, yeah. It still doesn't help. But the real issue is here. You know, and it's him learning how to control his anger. So. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm very... I mean, I've been hearing voices. There's this one, it's a man's voice, and he keeps, like, like, telling me how stupid I am, and I'm a bad mother, and, you know, just very negative things, like, you know, like, I should kill myself, or I should hurt somebody, or I should you know, do something that's completely illegal, like vandalize stuff, because I'm no good and I should just, you know, just get it over with and, and, and show the real me that I'm just a horrible person, you know, and just on and on and on, and it's like, it dictates to me everything that I do, you know, but it's like insulting me, oh, what, you're gonna drink that tea? Like right here, uh, that too is disgusting and so are you, so you're a good match. Like some stupid crap like that. You know, but it's not fun. And, um, you know, I've still been seeing things, you know, I see people, you know, it's more of like shadowy figures, but they're there and I see them and, you know, my moves have been all over the place and I've been rapid cycling and, um, I'm just, I'm not okay, this is not okay, and I don't know how to make it better. I don't know how to make it better. 